Hello again to another session of SQL Advanced Videos. This time this will be a follow-up video uh, on the insert videos. So this will be a series of two videos where we talk about uh, clustered index updates and updates on heap tables. Um, just to start with, so there are basically two types of updates we can have. There's an, basically an in-place update and a not in-place update. For an in-place update we don't change or move anything. So on the data page, the row stays where it is with the same row offset. Uh, we don't do anything, we just change the data in place. And then not in place is basically everything else. Something moves, something changes, something is somehow not on the place where it should be anymore. Um, yeah, so classic index and uh, heap tables uh, behave very differently. So we would start this with this one video just about um, update in heap tables. I also want to show you something on the computer in the management studio, which we do in the second part of the video. So let's just assume the situation. You know we have in a heap table all, only the IAM page chain that uh, is basically the organizational structure that we, we covered this in uh, previous videos. So basically imagine the following situation. So let this be a data page. Uh, in a heap table, an ordinary page with a header and some rows. We have here one, row 1, row 2 and row 3 and then the page is already full. So you see page 3 is a really big one and page 1 and 2 are rather slim. Um, the thing is now if we update uh, um, uh, it in place then nothing happens. Okay, this is very unspectacular. We just change the data here and that's it. But imagine we have some uh, variable length data type columns, for instance var variable character type or variable var binary or everything that basically has var in the name is uh, more is by definition um, flexible, you know. So imagine we, 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 we pump up those, um, those, those rows with, uh, uh, with a b bigger statement and we see, okay, what is if the row can't actually fit anymore on the page? This is the interesting scenario. So then basically what, what would be a good idea, what comes fresh to mind is, okay, let's just take another data page. Let's just move the page right here so that it can, that it can fit here now and erase it from here, okay? So if we do this, we have one big problem and that is called non-clustered indexes, okay? We can have non-clustered indexes on heaps, you know this. I uh, already made a video about non-clustered indexes that, which you can see right here. If you don't want to see it, click on it and then rewatch this episode. Um, the thing is, the, in the non-clustered indexes for heaps, in the leaf nodes where we actually point to the, to the data, we don't point to the clustered index key since we have no clustered index. We point to the row identifier. Okay, so this is a non-clustered index, a very simple one. We have just a root node and some data pages. And as I told you, the row identifier is basically simplified, a concatenation of the page ID or the page number, whatever you want to call it, and um, the row slot where on that page. So for a non-clustered index on, on, on a heap, maybe we go to this page and then we see, okay, the index key 45 points to the row with the row identifier A2. That means on page A we have the second slot involved. So if we now change this, uh, in a, like in the example before, we change the row to another page called maybe page B and on another slot, which doesn't really matter, just a change of pages is enough, then the whole row identifier changes. So we have to change, we would have to change all the non-clustered indexes, look for this particular entry and then change the, um, the new row, uh, change the row identifier to the new one. Okay, this would be very costly. Every time I have an update and I have a not in place update, I would have to reorganize my uh, non-clustered indexes. This can't actually happen. And that's why uh, in SQL Server it does not happen. So back to our example that we have the three rows and the row two expands so it doesn't fit anymore on the page A. I just called it now page A. Um, we have to move something but we don't have to change everything. So what SQL Server does is basically it moves the page, it moves the row to the uh, second page or to a new page, okay, where it totally fits. And then here it does not delete the row completely. It just uh, keeps a, a pointer here pointing to this very page. So in the end, we don't have to change any non-clustered indexes. We can keep it, 
Um, what happens is just if the non-cluster index is identifies, okay, I have to go to page A row slot two, and we go here, we find a row, but this row has no data, but just a, a row forward pointer, and this pointer points to the page where the row actually is. So what happens now if this also gets, assuming there are some more rows in here, whatever, and we want to grow even more on this page, but still stay be below the eight kilobyte uh, threshold of the page, then it has to move again. Yeah? And then, um, yeah, it, ha it will move again. It will move again on another page where it completely fits. And this would be also erased. But the thing is, we don't change now here uh, the, the row to another pointer. This would create a chain of pointers and would be very ineffective and cost uh, and very expensive actually because then we would have one IO for each new pointer so it will just be the uh, original pointer that is now changed to the new page and from this page it get completely wiped out. This is uh, to ensure that we have only one hop we have to one extra uh, mile that we have to go and not uh, like a chain of 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 com uh, chain of uh, yeah, chain of commands no but a chain of pages that we have to go through. So a very good question is now how do I actually get rid of a forward pointers if they happen if they appear in a very large number because I can't just shrink them just back I somehow have to get rid of them because you have to uh, realize that this is always one I/O operation more than you actually need. Imagine you have fifty percent of your rows in a heap being actually a forward pointer and you would have 50% useless uh, I.O. that you can reduce by just, redu by just eliminating those forward pointers. You can only get rid of those uh, pointers by rebuilding the table. So what does rebuild actually mean? So if rebuilding an index is you do an alter index uh, statement on a table. And that actually won't work. You can alter your non-clustered index on a heap. Of course it will reorganize or rebuild the whole non-clustered index but it won't do anything to heaps. So the only possible way that is actually good and right is to rebuild the heap table, which is the command order table, my heap table rebuilt. But be careful because it will change all of the row identifiers because a row identifier is the physical location as we learned and it will just basically insert into a new heap and delete the old one. It will be, um, it will be uh, rebuilding all your non-clustered indexes on the heap as well because of course all the p uh, physical positions of your data pages will completely change and that's why and that's uh, why the whole uh, indexes are yeah all of the indexes are basically useless then so it will trigger also a rebuild of all the indexes so if you have many indexes on those heaps and you should have some indexes because without any index a heap is not very useful actually um, you will have an automatically rebuild of this as well which of course leads to schema uh, uh, logs and so on and so forth but of course oh, the rebuild command itself does this as well. So to sum up the situation about updates in heaps it can create a forward uh, pointer, it can create therefore ne unnecessary I.O. operations that you have to take care of because a normal index maintenance is not uh, does not cover this because you have to do an auto table instead of an auto index statement. Um, but the, the good thing is that it won't change any non-clustered indexes so you can do whatever you want. The non-clustered indexes uh, by definition won't ever uh, need a rebuild after you updated your heap. But of course, since you have to rebuild the table at some point, if you don't want to waste your I.O., you have to rebuild all of the non-clustered indexes, which is basically the big down part of this. So thanks for watching this. We will now switch to the computer where I t show you those um, things that I talked about in a quick example. So here at the PC we have a look at the management studio and I want to show you those uh, update behavior that is the moving part so when we change a row so that it don't fit in the page anymore and it gets a forward record. So first we make sure I drop my table dbo big rows and then I create a table that has just an identity column but no clustered index that is no primary key or nothing. Then we have a B column and a C column, both of are uh, 1,600. So we create this table and we fill it up with five rows, each 1,600 bytes uh, length in total. So they all will fit on my eight kilobyte uh, page. So let's insert those values. And let's have a look at where those values actually are right now. 
we just see they are all on the page 2336 in this case and we have no uh, nothing in the column C but something in the column B they are all there and to make very sure we have a look at the DMDB index physical stats um, management function and we see that we have here for our row when we have a look at the forwarded record count we have zero forwarded records because all of the rows fit into this page. So then let's update the uh, entry with the uh, A value of 3 and uh, fill in some the C column with uh, X's and this will lead to the, the point that um, the row with the um, A equals 3 where A equals 3 does not fit anymore on the page. So if we do this and we have a look it first seems that all of the rows are on this page which is the case but for page um, for this row for this very row here um, the data is not actually on this page anymore how can we see this so let's have a look at page 2336 let's enter here 2336 and have a look at there so now we see here some page the buffer the page header and then the actual data so you see here for um, the first row slot slot zero we have all our a's okay this is the first row then when this is done we have slot one that is the second slot and we have all b's okay and then where the c's should be we don't have it so slot two has not the c's but slot three has again the d's that we expect so what has slot two slot two instead has a zero four this is the first byte this tells us that this is a forwarding stop okay the next uh, bytes 210900 a hexadecimal pointer is a hexadecimal pointer to the page ID. So let's just write this down. It's um, yeah, we have to sort it the other way around because it's little endian, big endian things. So we have actually 0, 0, 0, 009 and 21. This needs now to be converted to hexa uh, to decimal because this is actually a hexadecimal. So let's uh, just uh, do it here. And we see it's 2337. So the 2337, well, we write it down, 2337, and we have a look at that page, which is, as you can see, actually the next page here. Probably the next page in this extent. And when we have a look at this page now, we can see our missed row, where we have the C's here and then followed by the X's. You can also see this now here in this uh, management uh, inline uh, table valued function that we have one forwarded row. So now to the part where we get rid of this. So we have to do outer table DBO big rows rebuild. And as we can see afterwards, we have no forwarded record anymore. If we now have a look where the where this row actually is uh, situated, we will see that indeed not all of them uh, did fit on, our, on one page. So now we see that the first four entries fit on the one page. You can see it here uh, if you have a look at the page ID. And then the, the last uh, row uh, didn't fit on the page anymore, so it got a new page. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next time we will talk about clustered indexes and update statements. Please subscribe and tell your colleagues and friends and see you soon.